Hi, this is Chippy from umpcportal.com and today I'm going to talk about a range of mobile computing devices. I'm going to tell you how I use them in 10 minutes. So let's start with the smartphone. This is the Nokia N82. Um, it's about a year old. And actually I'm using it less and less for internet stuff. It's a 3G enabled phone. It's running a Series 60 uh, multitasking software. So it's pretty good uh, in terms of smartphone platform. It's got a fantastic camera in it with uh, a real flash, 5 megapixel Carl Zeiss uh, glass lens, good uh, audio capabilities, and I'm basically using it as a pod catcher and a camera and a voice phone at the moment. I do sometimes using it, use it for uh, a little bit of twittering maybe, and m.reader.com of course, but apart from that, um, I'm finding the web experience pretty uh, lacking on this now, so I'm tending to use uh, a separate device. So that's the Nokia N82. Then we've got uh, another Nokia device here. This is uh, the Nokia N810. It's also about a year old. Um, running pretty much the same hardware as the, as the smartphone I just showed you, but it's running MIMO software. And it's a full Linux operating system. It's got a 4.1 inch screen and a keyboard. And this is where the difference is between the smartphone and the uh, tablet. Um, in terms of connectivity, it's only got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but uh, I'm using it tethered with the phone quite a bit, and I'm tending to use it a lot for microblogging and instant message uh, presence. It's also got navigation on it, GPS, and it's got a full browser on it, although the browser is extremely slow, so I'm tending to, to use it only for mobile websites, but for using a Google Reader, it's absolutely a, uh, a real um, joy to use and read the uh, uh, RSS feeds on this. So that's the Nokia N810. Now we move on to uh, an Intel based uh, mid in the same form factor as the Nokia N810 and really um, doing much the same job as the N810 except at a very professional level. So this has got a fast full browser, the, the browser is about three times as fast as that on the NA10 and that's what I'm using it for. It's actually um, got 3G built in as well so this one is really an on-the-go professional level um, browsing device for me. I can also run uh, all my internet apps in there as well. Three megapixel autofocus camera takes really good pics if I need to so I can just drag those into Flickr when needed and um, uh, a fairly reasonable set of software. The software suite isn't as good as on the uh, N810, or rather isn't as complete uh, or as well developed, but really this for me is a browsing device on the go for microblogging, emails, and uh, even some small blog posts. So that's the Compile Jax 10, also known as the iGo MID from Intel. Now this one, many of you think a strange looking device, this is the Y-Brain i1, so this is not the B1 that was originally on the VIA platform, this is on the uh, Atom platform, and this is one that is used for functionality over form. It's very, very easy to use, it runs Windows XP Home, it's fast, it has four to six hours battery life, built-in 3G, SD card slot, 60 gig drive, and um, it's uh, seriously productive if you wanna do stuff on the go. You can actually use it as a, as a full computer by plugging in a, a keyboard and a, and, a, and a monitor, but I don't do that. I tend to use this um, for blogging on the go, for photo editing, for basically using my desktop processes on the go. If I don't need to, uh, if I don't, if I don't I haven't set myself a task of, of, of actually needing a keyboard, for example, I'm not going out to write a report or something. This is a device I might take. Because of it, because it's basically my desktop processes in my hand, and that's the reason I like it. Up to uh, 10 hours standby battery life, and as I said, four to five hours online beats most other devices. So, next step up is the uh, Everon Note. This is uh, what well, looks like a netbook, but it's actually much, much smaller than a netbook. If you look at the size of the MID there and my hand you'll see that it's actually one hand holdable which is uh, very different to a netbook it's actually got a keyboard where the characters are about as big as um, the characters or the keys on a on a netbook so for actually typing text and reports it's pretty quick the keyboard's very nice 800 grams hasn't got fantastic battery life two to two and a half hours but it has got 3g 
and it's got a dual core processor with a discrete graphics uh, module in it with hardware decoding of video. So I can actually use this for video crunching on the go as well. SD card slot makes it, makes it useful to transfer files from my camera and I'm tending to use this quite a lot uh, if I'm going out and I need to, to do any, um, any writing. I can use this keyboard quite easily, getting used to it very nicely. Powerful, but definitely could do with a bit more battery life. That's the Rayon Digital Everon Note. Here's the first uh, UMPC I ever bought. It's a tablet kiosk EO7210, I believe. Uh, I'm not actually using this as a portable device, but I am using it as a kind of desktop device. I'm using it as a secondary screen. I use it with uh, Synergy uh, to share my keyboard and mouse. And because it's got um, TV out on the back and Ethernet, USB and VGA, it can be, can be easily adapted to uh, as, a, as a kind of media system. Um, so really this is a kind of secondary screen for me and the only reason I, I, I use it is because I have it. I probably, although you can get these um, on the market, they were selling them off for about three or four hundred euros, which is quite a good price. It's Pentium powered, so it's as powerful as a, as a netbook running Windows XP tablet edition. So that's uh, Tablet Kiosk EO UMPC. Then we've got one that's a very similar size to the Rayon Digital Everon I showed you. Uh, this is the Kojinsha SC3. Now I'm not actually using this uh, at all, apart from testing at the moment, Windows 7 perhaps, and some Ubuntu builds. But I wanted to show you because it's got a very nice feature in the um, convertible screen. And the reason it's nice is because it weighs only 800 grams. So again, it's down at the one hand holdable level. And as a uh, Google Reader viewer, it's fantastic. It's expensive to use it just for that. Um, but that's probably one of the highlights of this sort of form factor and weight, one-handed weight. This one's actually got GPS, PCI Express, um, 60 gig hard drive, two gigs RAM, and originally was running Windows Vista, but um, I can't get Windows XP running on it, so it's probably the reason I'm not using it, because Vista was too slow, and even Windows 7 is a little bit too slow for this platform. So that's the Coginsha SC3. And then finally, the netbook. And uh, when you go back to the first device there and see how big the netbook is compared to all the others, it's almost like a laptop in comparison. Now this is the one I might use if I'm going away for any length of time, a weekend, or going away on holiday. Um, it allows me to continue my desktop processes with a bit more comfort. Uh, it's got bigger storage, bigger keyboard, bigger screen, but hasn't got the battery life, hasn't got the 3G of the Everon, so it's not one I might take down to the to the coffee shop, to be honest. And because it's 1.2 kilograms in weight, it's not very good in one hand. You can't spend a lot of time doing that in one hand, whereas with the other devices that are 800 grams, you can. So, that is it. There's my device set and what I use them for. Hope that's useful for you to get an idea of where some of these devices fit in, including the cup of tea there. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop me a line on umpcportal.com and I'll try and get back to you with the answers. Thanks, you've been watching uh, a video from Steve Payne at umpcportal.com.